Hello, friends, and welcome into NFL Daily. I am your host, Tom Downey. NFL free agency is almost here, so today we're taking a look at where Byron Jones, the top corner on the free agency market, could play in 2020. they got a whole bunch of different destinations for him and potential landing spots. And the Cowboys, they're probably going to let Byron Jones hit free agency. They don't appear willing to pay him what he's going to make on the open market. Now, never say never. It is the NFL. Crazy stuff happens. I'd be, and I've been this way for a while now, pretty darn surprised if Byron Jones ended up back with the Cowboys because he could very well get a record-setting deal in free agency. His coverage stats per pro football focus this year. Yes, there is the lack of interceptions. That is a big deal. But guess what? When you're allowing 331 yards in a season and he missed like one, maybe one and a half games this year total in, in terms of snaps, that's really good production. Byron might not have been a, you know, Stephon Gilmore type corner, and not that there are very many of those players out there, but he's a lockdown corner. Teams did not throw at him, and when they did, they did not have much success, which is why it's at least a little bit surprising to me that it appears very likely that Byron Jones is going to leave the Dallas Cowboys. They just aren't valuing him in the way that, as host of the Cowboys report, I want them to value him. If Byron leaves, and that's the clear assumption here, it leaves a huge hole for the Cowboys at the cornerback spot. They have the money. They have the most cap of any team we're going to discuss today, which is kind of crazy to think about. But because they, they want to pay Dak and Amari and because they like flexibility, they appear a little bit less willing to throw what could easily be 16 or $17 million per year at Byron Jones. So never say never, but if you're a Cowboys fan who wants to keep Byron, yeah, don't get your hopes up anymore. So where will Byron Jones sign? We're going to go through my top destinations in a second, but first I want to hear from you. So if you're watching on YouTube, scroll on down to the pinned comment. I've made this question, the pinned comment, where will Byron Jones sign? That way, if you get with an ad break here on YouTube, you can cast your votes while it's playing. Before we get in the top five, some other teams I want to mention. The Colts have former Cowboys assistant Matt Edifus as their defensive coordinator and plenty of money to spend. It's not really their M.O., though, to spend big in free agency. I don't think they'll go after Byron. The New York Jets have a big time unit corner, but they might look elsewhere. They're a sleeper. And then the Denver Broncos. They might have made this top five list. They did trade for A.J. Boye, though. Or Do they really want to pay? 35 million almost combined to those two corners. You're getting upwards of that $30 million price tag. I don't know if that's the route they really want to end up going. So those are teams to watch, but I don't consider them in my top five. Now we will have all kinds of NFL free agency news and rumors and signings. We'll be live a whole bunch on our main channel. So hit that sub button. Make sure you got the notifications bell turned on as well. The link is below if you need it, but you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on that main channel, hit that big red button. We will keep you up to date on everything NFL free agency this offseason. All right, now let's get into the top five here. Washington Redskins, they check in there at that fifth spot. Plenty of cap space, and they do have a history, as producer Alicia can confirm, of signing former Cowboys in free agency. Now, historically... Those signings haven't always worked out. Uh, there have been, been some issues there, although Byron Jones is different than most of those players the Redskins have picked up, and they often love to throw money around in free agency. But I wonder if they could land James Bradbury instead, because they certainly need cornerback help. A, Quentin Dunbar uh, once out, maybe, maybe not, or a new deal, kind of unclear at this point. He kind of went back and forth in the media about what he wanted. I like Jim Rowan in the nickel role. Fabian Moreau hasn't really gotten there. But I mentioned James Bradbury. Because Ron Rivera, James's former coach in Carolina, is now the Redskins head coach, I would wonder if Bradbury is the preferred route for both the organization and, of course, for the player as well. My issue is, although Bradbury does make more plays on the ball, he gives up more plays too. I mean, the yards doubled. How many yards is one inter inter interception worth? Is it really worth, you know, 100 I don't think that it is. That's kind of the, the game you're playing there. So pick a corner. Would you rather have Byron Jones on team? We'll just pretend the money is $15 million per year for each player just to keep it even. One for Byron Jones, two for James Bradbury. I like both these corners. And although I love the interceptions from James Bradbury, and he's been asked to do a lot in that Panthers coverage, I would actually go with Byron Jones instead. 
All right, we'll stick in Texas for number four. That is the Houston Texans. They've got $61 million plus in cap space, and they could lose two of their top cornerbacks in free agency. They're, they're to let go of Vernon Hargraves, no surprise there. So corner is a need for them. There's really no doubt about that one. But they've also got some big contracts coming up. Laramie Tunsil has all kinds of leverage. Deshaun Watson is going to get the bag. So you could see a scenario in which Houston doesn't throw around a bunch of money at a cornerback in free agency. Maybe they try and retain some of their guys, or maybe they go with Gary on Conley. They try and hope Lonnie Johnson is ready to go as a full-fledged starter in year two. Because if they do want to sign Byron Jones, it's going to be expensive. The cornerback market is very much due for a reset. Xavier Howard leads the way at 15.05. Uh, Josh Norman was on this list, and then he got cut, so he's no longer available on there. Xavier Rhodes, Tremaine Johnson also mo both might be cut there. But with the cap set to rise and potentially explode in a couple years, I think $16 million is in the range for Byron Jones. Remember, when top flight players hit free agency, they get overpaid. That is simply how it works in the NFL. Now I have a little Texas feud here. What's the best NFL team in Texas? Type C for the Cowboys or T for the Houston Texans. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. C for the Cowboys, T for the Texans. And if you want to rep your favorite team, we got you guys covered. We got a special price drop for you guys. NFL Nike jerseys are now under 80 bucks. Normally these run about 100, the price drops, so we let you guys know. Under 80 bucks at chatsports.com slash jersey deal. That is chatsports.com slash jersey deal. They got Cowboys. They got Texans. They got all kinds of jerseys. Now the supply is getting a little bit limited because we told you guys about this uh, last week. But hey, or I guess earlier this week, it's still Sunday. Hey, we got you guys covered. It's in the description and the comments, by the way, so you can click and go shop. Chatsports.com slash jersey deal. All right, number three, and I think there's a bit of a tier. There's five and four, there's three, and then I think one and two are going to be involved in a bidding. We'll more on them. The Las Vegas Raiders checking in at number three, former Cowboys defensive coordinator Rod Marinelli is on staff, so there is that connection. And the Raiders reportedly have interest in Byron as they search for a legitimate number one cornerback. Now, I like the upside of Trayvon Mullen, Isaiah Johnson might be still be a year away since he was so banged up this past year, but Daryl Worley, Nevin Lawson, that doesn't move the needle for me at all. If you can bring in Byron Jones as your number one, let ne let uh, Lamarcus Jordan play in the nickel or move in the safety or whatever you end up doing at that spot. Jones, Mullen, Johnson, Lawson, that's a pretty good grouping there at the cornerback spot. So if the Raiders... Want to get aggressive again in free agency? Because remember, they're not paying Antonio Brown anymore. Feel free to throw in your FABs in the comments. I like that move quite a bit for the Las Vegas Raiders if they want to get aggressive and throw money at corner, freeing up receiver and linebacker and whatever for the NFL draft. All right, the top two. The New York Giants, they check in at that second spot. And if it truly devolves into a massive bidding war, think that the uh, the C.J. Mosley type contract last year or, or Quan Alexander last year where both those players really blew out the market at their respective position of linebacker. The Giants are the, one who's pr are the ones who are probably going to get the bidding war won because they got $74 million in cap space. They can outbid other teams if Byron Jones says, you know what, I'm just going to end up going to the highest bidder. And they need cornerback help. Now, now, they've invested in recent years. They spent a supplementary draft pick on Sam Bill, who can't stay healthy. DeAndre Baker was really rough to start and then got better as the year went on. Corey Ballantine plays nickel. Julian Love is kind of the safety nickel hybrid for them last year, so we'll see where he plays. But if you can move DeAndre Baker to cornerback two, slot in Byron Jones at CB1, that's really intriguing to me and it helps upgrade the secondary for New York, and they can focus elsewhere in the NFL draft. Now we'll get to another NFC East team here in a second. We'll talk about all four today. Crazy, right? So who will win the NFC East in 2020? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you're curious what Vegas thinks and the sportsbook think, here's the NFC's projected win totals from our friends over at BetDSI. The Eagles are 10 wins, Cowboys 9 then the Giants and Redskins, six and a half and five and a half. So if you want to bet 
on futures bets for the NFL. It is now March Madness. How much fun is this time of the year, by the way? Do it all on BetDSI. It's chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code NFL120. That promo code, it'll get you a 120% deposit bonus. So put out some fun, high upside bets with your bonus money. If you hit, you're cooking with gas. If not, hey, you spent house money. You're fine. Chatsports.com slash bet. That promo code, one more time, is NFL120. All right, at number one, and to be quite honest, I almost made this 1A, 1B. I, I think you can flip-flop Eagles and Giants. They are the co-favorites in my eyes. They have a huge need at the cornerback spot. Now, they've invested in young guys, Sidney Jones, Rasul Douglas, and those guys haven't really panned out. And Philadelphia, despite the cap space, which isn't among the NFL's best, but they have found ways to spend it because they're smart with their money. They have, willing, they have shown a willingness to be aggressive, and Ronald Darby's a free agent. Jalen Mills is a free agent. You might not bring those guys back. That leaves Devontae Max, kind of, again, the safety nickel hybrid guy. Rasul Douglas, Sidney Jones, do you trust them? Philadelphia could throw money at Byron Jones, 16-plus million. Now you feel so much better about your number one cornerback spot. You can still try and bring back Darby or Mills or even still spend a premium draft pick once again on the spot. But Philadelphia... If they really want to fix cornerback in the free agency, Byron Jones, maybe Chris Harris too, are good options for the Philadelphia Eagles if that's the route they really want to go. All right, so to recap my top five destinations, the Redskins and Texans, five and four, kind of a lower tier for me. The Houston Texans at number or at four, excuse me, and then the Las Vegas Raiders at three. And then for me, there's a pretty clear-cut top two. It is the New York Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles. I would not be surprised if this ends up being an NFC East battle for the services of the number one cornerback on the free agency market. If it devolves into a full-fledged bidding war, I think the Giants will win. If Byron's willing to take close to the same amount, but maybe just a little bit less to still play for a team that's going to compete for a title, the Eagles make a whole lot of sense. Or maybe Philadelphia opens up the checkbook anyway. But I think Giants and Eagles are the top two teams to watch out for for Byron Jones in NFL free agency.